Hello everybody, this is Nezarek Sins, and it's another lovely day. And today we're going to talk about a few things that have come up and changed in the last week or so. This is more or less, again, a personal thing, guys. This is not, you know, me trying to go above and beyond of these things. Um, am I, am I going to tell you I'm sitting in a room by myself with a, everybody asleep and nobody's around so I don't get disturbed now but I'm going to tell you a few things that happened during the week that kind of caught my attention that I either wrote down or promenade on my mind to make sure I say something here um, a lot of these podcast things are going to run for about 30 minutes and um, starting with this one uh, surprise surprise everybody if you're on my Spotify welcome I appreciate you being here but if you're not um, welcome because you're on the new platform and the new platform being YouTube. So the wife suggested to me that I should do a podcast, basically. And yeah, I've been doing it for a couple of weeks now, but it's whatever. Um, that I need to get rid of my content on my computer. And I said this last week, I have a lot of content of just random videos that I need to go through, cut up, and push out. And I was like, you know, I don't have any audio for... Sorry for that clicking... I'm very drooly for some reason. So I have a lot of audio, uh, audio. I have a lot of video clips on my hard drive and it, I, I don't know what they are. I mean, I know what game they are because it kind of shows it and I can skim through it, but I don't know the significance of them. So going through and I started to chop up a video of an Elden Ring content, which is the most or the latest video I have on there. And, you know, looking back, Elden Rings came out almost a year ago today. And, um, I was just like, oh, I need content, man. I need, I need to understand what this content is. I need to cut it up, chop it. Do I need to do a narrative? Do I need to say what's going on? Do I need to describe everything that's happening? And the answer is no. Because, in short, this, the way that I'm going to do it with some of my content, uh, especially for the ones that have, like, a, um, what do you call a narrative behind it? I guess it's the best way to look at it. Um, I'm just going to drop in the background of a podcast. So I'm not saying strictly Elden Ring or like Fallout or random multiplayer content. No, it, multiplayer content is probably going to be chopped up to the point where it's only kills or good shots or things like that. But when we come to something like Elden Ring... I'm more likely going to just throw it in the background of a podcast. Give you something to look at as you're not going to be looking at my face in between these things. And if you're on Spotify, then go ahead and hit up the YouTube if you want to actually watch or listen to this. Uh, I believe I don't have this on YouTube Music yet, but I think I'm going to try to look into a way to apply it where it is labeled as a podcast with content. So if you guys want to do that in that way, feel free. Um... One of the things that have changed in the past week is me listening to podcasts again to reorganize the structure of my podcast and make sure I have a script, to have things to talk about, transitions, and um, a lot of the podcasts that I've come across are always done in pairs. There's never single person content. And if there is, it's very one sided and they're like, okay, now I got to do this. Now I got to do that. I'm, I'm not going to do that. I know better. I mean, I, I am going to sit there and say, oh, the out of this budgery, because it, there will be eventual ads and things like that. Like, I am sponsored by W, but they're not going to be like, like, hey, put out another podcast about our stuff. You know, if I do, it will be labeled sponsored, uh, which apparently is in a lot of the terms and services of this stuff. Um, going back on the idea of content so currently if you're watching my content right now it's Elden Ring and it's not only just Elden Ring it is the very first time I ever played it because I was a real stickler for like hey I need to record everything that happens and you know make a video about it everybody loves the let's plays uh, they love to watch people play a game and try it out for the first time and I always thought that was a good you know target audience but at the same time you have people who are like well you should have done this that and the next and it's like I, I'm aware that's why it's labeled first time playthrough or 
um, they'll sit there and complain, you should have done it this way, you shouldn't have done that from the start. It's like, this was literally coming out of the, um, the minds of, like, the game just dropped. I haven't watched any Twitch streams. I haven't watched any TikToks. I haven't watched any YouTube videos that dropped immediately on what you should do for a Souls game. This was the first Souls game that I played that was genuinely fun. Like, yeah, I played Dark Souls. Yeah, I played Dark Souls 2. I played Bloodborne. And all those had, like, um, you have to beat me or this becomes a problem. And Elden Ring kind of took... Th that away from it because the other souls games were for the most part a linear path and there was ways to exploit it and get around it blah 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 i've seen speed runs i really like the speed runs but um elden ring was the first ones like here's the tutorials here's the basics if you choose because if you choose not to fall down there like uh, if you watch the video I actually go back and redo the tutorials um so I do that and now in this open world, not knowing what to do, what to expect. Yeah, there's the, if you actually read all the damn uh, hints and tips, it tells you to follow the golden trail because that is the story, but it doesn't tell you how damn hard the game is. And it literally goes from, hey, you can kill everybody in two hits to there's somebody who can size you no more than two safe spots away. And this person who sizes you has a good armor set, has a good armor, has a good shield, and you don't know his attack moves. He changes it up. It's almost like he knows that you are bait. And um, in this gameplay, I don't challenge him. I know to avoid him. I can't remember the reason why I knew that. I think it was along the lines of I didn't know that you could kill everybody and receive more points or your, your vials back or... Uh, things like that or it was I just was super dead set on traveling and I legitimately went back into this game save file and loaded it up and okay well first of all in this game save file I managed to choose Vanguard which I believe I left in I don't remember because it was nobody wants to watch you create a character for 20 minutes and this podcast is only like 30 tops um so I created the character, but the, the character I created was a vanguard. So there's about, I believe, nine different classes. And, you know, one of them being the obvious, I don't want to choose stats, I want to build my own character. Aside from that one, there are pre-made classes with pre-made weapons and spell slots and things like that. Vanguard being the, I would like to say, the magic version of the default character. And... Because the default character, I believe, has a halberd, which is a, the first two-handed weapon that you can receive. And um, so I chose Vanguard. I was, I, I think when I played this game, it, because I think it was one of those situations where I didn't have money to buy it the week of it dropping. I had to wait until payday, which was like the following week kind of thing. And um, so I'm sitting here. I don't know how to create a character. I don't know how to design the face. I don't know this, that. Like, should I jump male or female? I literally... Uh, literally, and you're gonna hear that a lot, by the way. I, I sat down and I, um, I'm like, okay, I need to do something. I need a random number generator. And what's more random than dice? Yes, I use Google. And they had them roll dice for me on some of the, the stuff and kind of went with basic default look. Well, things that look good in my opinion. And, um, so basically male or female heads or tails. Or, um which class to choose and you basically one through nine so i'm like roll a d10 minus one and that's literally how i got vanguard and i was happy with it i chose female because i got tails and then name i don't remember how i got the name i think i left it in there but i'm not 100 percent sure just one of those ones i typed in i think i googled a, like a greek name or something i don't remember um, when it came to the stuff for the, um, pocket items, I think I also rolled a d20 or a d10, or I, I forget what it is because it's been so long since I played it. And looking back from editing me to watching my character explore, 
I legitimately pick things that I would pick now if I was to create a new character. And I'm one of those people who will sit there and create like five new characters because I'm like, oh, I can do this a little bit better. Oh, I can do this a little bit better and play the same content over and over again. It's, uh, I would like to blame the ADD, but at the same time, I know I don't have it. I just have a dysfunctional mindset that just, you could do this better, so make it better. And so get into the gameplay though, it's very basic. I, I don't challenge the horse because I heard, ho bleh, sorry, I heard horror stories about challenging the horse. So I'm like, okay, you gotta go past the horse. But where do I go past the horse? And then again, this kind of led to the idea of like, you have to follow the golden trails because you don't have a map and the golden trails are physically in front of you. Therefore it should be easy to follow. And this is also like, yeah, I forgot to talk to, um, damn, what's his name? White mask guy right outside, um, like five times. Like, I think I talked to him three times and he told me to go to the castle. So I went to the castle essentially. And, um, I forgot the crafting materials or, um, I was desperate for leveling a weapon in such an early time. Uh, this is where me going back onto the save file kind of comes into action. I'm missing all my clothes. So uh, I wanted to make this like a uh, a video, a short on YouTube, and which I probably will when I get the chance. But I hear it now first. Yeah. Anyways, basically, I logged into this account and it said six hours. I have six hours recorded. Okay, this is the account. This is the name, right? I vaguely look at the name. I'm going to be honest. I didn't really look at it. I log in. It's a female with the same hair design and face design. But she's in like a full soldier garb. I'm like, okay, yeah, that was pretty good stats. I understand. Let me, for screenshot's sake, let me change the, uh, I don't know, um, the the vest or the vest of course the vest anyways change the chess piece back to the the vanguard chess piece because it's a really nice chess piece like cosmetically it's good um armor wise not so much so let me, let me switch back when i opened up the inventory i had nothing i had the soldiers i think i had two of them actually i had two soldier chess pieces and i was just like what where's the vanguard chess piece i don't I don't remember anything. This is over a year ago. What did I do with it? Normally I kind of get like these uh, snippet memories of these things. But this time I was just kind of like, I don't remember what I did. Like I still have the shield. I still have the magic focus. I still have the spells. I still have the sword, but I have an additional sword. But looking at the sword, it was one of those, if you killed enough soldiers, you, you kind of got the other sword, so, eh. Um, and I'm not running heavy sword, because this was a character that I was like, oh, I want to do heavy swords on, and I know, I remember that. A female with a buster blade is essentially what the thought was. But, um, I just, I, I didn't make sense to me. I'm like, the, why do I have this shitty ass armor on? Like, I, and you'll play it now, where it's been six months since I touched Elden Ring in the first place. Like, on my Steam library, it's legitimately, like, I have it sorted by date, and it's six months ago. <laughs> like, I it's currently June, I played it back in December. Like, and that was just turning the bitch on because there was an update. Um, yeah, I believe it was the Coliseum update, but it raises the question, could I run my Brent on my first time playthrough character there? Like, there, there's no, all characters are created equally. There's no, hey, this is your very first character, it's slightly easier. No, this was a game that was like, hey, this is, everybody's equal until they choose the path they want to choose. Yeah, there was a lot of exploits back in the day that made it easy and they patched them, blah, blah, blah. I mean, but the same three main exploits, uh, the, uh, the bird in the blood palace, um, jumping off certain points in the blood palace and i don't know playing the uh playing the game main three anyways um so i get back on this content or, or i get on to make a screenshot for like this youtube video essentially and um i was like hey yeah where where's my clothes like how can i pose with no clothes on i mean i could 
but it's not going to be the same because it's not the same character. The context is not there. Oh, I need to go and find the the trader that sells the Vanguard stuff. And honestly, like nothing is explored on this character. I only have one map. I don't know where anything else is. I mean, I, in, in trader sense, in other words, I don't know where the trader for the Vanguard specifically is. Yeah, I can Google it. I probably will, but I digress. Going back to like, uh, so I, I decided to go to uh, Lower Than Grave, I think it was, in order to get the flask, which I didn't even have that yet. Hell, I didn't even take the the moment to look at my inventory because I was currently saved at the safe uh, the the graves where um, you fight Margot for the first time. So I didn't even take the time to look if I had the power f uh, flask. The attribute for the flask which is like one of the first few basic things that you can pick up to help you get the edge and uh, and which every time I think about that all I think about is these PvP videos that I watch that people like start up with like a pawn a flask another flask another spell another buff another buff and then they attack somebody and if the other person has buffed as well, it's nothing. It's like they're on the even playing field, but if they haven't buffed and one shots them, it's like they're level one when they're not level 99 kind of thing. And um, man, I always wanted to be a part of that, but thank God I'm not. <laughs> I can't imagine. I mean, like if I was good at the game, then yeah, maybe, but going back and playing this game, kind of put into stone, I'm glad I'm not doing it. <laughs> Anyways. Um, so I decided to go get the flask and the tear, and I was just like, okay, I need, I can pick this up. I have the moon veal I can go grab. I have like so many options. I'm like, no, I need to do the basic build, which is grab the flask, grab the power, go and grab one of the side of, sides of the coins over by the flask. And while you're doing that, make sure you get the skill art for the blood splash, because blood splash is a stupid amount of damage early game and grab that um hope to god he can farm the boss to get the sword it's kind of whatever i think you could pick it up at another location um once you grab that run through and get to i don't know there's a whole course that you can go basically go kill the dragon get the extra spells get the the um, forgot what they're called the little charm that does increase uh damage but you also take increased damage but and, anyways uh, i'm kind of just dragging this along this this game was amazing and once they came out with the mod to play with other people it was just even better and i played with my wife and we have characters i think we got to third boss no because technically so we beat Margot, we beat uh, the wolf, we beat the witch. Uh, I think we were on our way to the kingdom. Oh, we beat the, the, the dragon horse. I remember that. It took us a while. I remember that. And once we beat that, we got into the kingdom. I think that's where we stopped because we got to like farm Azula. It was just kind of. Sorry, I hear things. Anyways, we yeah, basically got to farm Missoula and just stopped. Like we we got to the boss and it was, either we killed the boss and then stopped, or we just kept dying to the people there because we didn't have a strong enough build or something. But basically, we stopped there and then we just kind of moved on. We had Overwatch or we had. Um, or Dying or Apex or other games that we would play together basically. Um, I want to kind of trail off because I'm already more than halfway through this video on uh, uh, things to talk about for one. Is that um, I wanted to do a segment on like games that released this week, and I, so I literally Google games that come out this week and this week is the week of the 15th june 15th and next week yes is 
um, starting Monday is Juneteenth, which is a government holiday, which is amazing because we get paid double. Um, but so I just quickly googled it, and literally there's about uh, seven games that come out. And this kind of reminds me of the guy on TikTok that also does this, where he's like, oh, uh, this is what you missed in gaming this week. And I'm going to butcher these names. Um, Door Donge is the game. Um, it comes out on all consoles, and it comes out on the... Uh, I think it's already out. I think this was on the 14th. I forgot to put the dates on these, I'm going to be honest. Crime Boss comes out on PS5 and Xbox. Um, Jack Jennings comes out on the Switch this week. I believe this one's Thursday, and then and the rest of them are on the 15th. Layers of Fear for, uh, 2023 is apparently a remake. I meant to physically like look up these games as I was doing it, but I literally did this in the last like 15 minutes of work. Um, this uh, Layers of Fear comes out on PS5, Xbox, and PC. Protocorgi on PC and Switch only, F123, all but Switch, um, Park Beyond, it comes out on the 15th as well, on uh, PS5, Xbox, and PC, so uh, something I want to note, and I literally made a note about this, is F1, I didn't know they had fucking games, excuse my language, um, the F123, I didn't know they had f1 racing video games just like they, they do fifa and nfl i think nhl it was another one i was just kind of like they actually have this and it made me wonder it made me want to look into the community and realize and see if they have like dedicated fans or is it another um seasonal game kind of like fifa where you have to play during the season in order to be the best and make sure you have the best characters and you have to be physically active blah blah blah. basically another money and time sink um but i didn't know and i really wanted to look into that um there's no games that i wanted this week it's no surprise and um mainly because i don't even know what the games are f1 does look interesting it's, it's one of those ones where if it shows up on um game pass i would run game pass and see how it is which um i'll get to the game pass here yeah. um another little segment something that goes with the uh what comes out this week is games that came out this week in the past so on this day um i've seen a lot of tiktokers do this I and mean, this is a trend that kind of started back in the day like back when i was um uh, fifth grade like hey did he know back in the 1970s uh, this happened this day in 1980s. This happened this day. And gas was only 82 cents. Blah blah blah. No, and this one's strictly games. Cause uh, so originally, if I was to get in a little depth on it, like the whole reason why I'm doing this whole let me talk about video games thing is G4, and G4 was an amazing network, and they had X Play and X Play had Ad Ad Adam. Savage? No, Adam. One of the Adams. And um, he was. He was a very inspirational, especially like talking wise. Like, I wanted to get into talk shows and interactions and things like that because of the way he talked. He talked in this very like interesting way that kept your attention and i didn't know if it was the show itself or just how he did it because every time i watched him like even if it was on like e3 coverage or if it was on g4x play or if it was just game reviews he had this very like melodic almost and um cadence and a very melodic cadence and this cadence was like talk about a thing low twice talk about another thing low talk another thing about low but hey did he hear and like like up the volume not volume but like uh, pitch back up to the original pitch on the last line and it usually led with a question or a uh, hey gotcha fact or uh, um but it was like almost like a uh, an algorithm that worked on every conversation yeah if it was something that was a little bit more drawn out like a podcast it was first line uh second subject third subject and the last subject would have that twist on it it was usually a transitional question to the other people 
and then the interactions you had with people oh man i loved it um i forgot the female's name i, I should really look these up, things up and i've told myself constantly but you never know when you're gonna like sit there and say hey i'm gonna talk about something that came out in the fucking 2000s that had very little impact on people because they didn't stay open it's one of those things that was like on channel 64 on comcast or some bs like that i don't channel numbers that's another subject i would love to get into um anyway so on this day uh week of the 15th i i say that vaguely because you know every year kind of shifts uh so did i label these correctly i did but i also put the fucking link in here god damn it um, so the two that I put on here that are like instant like talk about was June 14th, five years ago, Among Us became these, that these kids love because it's spot out the time I'll tell and it reminds me of these super old board games, uh, came out five years ago, uh, I want to hit you right in the nostalgia, five years ago Among Us came out. I wasn't a fan of it. I'm not a huge fan of it, but I will play the VR one. Um, Tetris. Who hasn't played Tetris? Oh, I got stories about Tetris, bro. Um, 34 years ago, on June 14th. It, see, Tetris was one of those games that were a foundation of the gaming community. It was one of the first games to be shipped out on the Game Boy, which I'm sure people have seen the, uh, either the show or the documentary on that. I'm sure uh, people who are even game savvy have played Tetris because it's almost built into every single mobile game out there. Um, personally, uh, to get back to some of the stories, Tetris uh, has a place in my heart because my mother, um, when she bought me a Game Boy, she bought Tetris. And it wasn't, it was a Game Boy Color, it was a Game Boy Color, it was a Game Boy Color Atomic Purple with Pokemon Yellow that she bought me that because I was able to get like one used game and that's why I picked up and um, she bought Tetris Tetris was like I can never tell if it's in my house or the neighbors <sighs> wish I had sound perfect anyways she bought Tetris and she actually held on to my Game Boy for about a month before she gave it back to me and uh, she was, she loved Tetris. She it, she was passionate. I could never beat her scores until I got to I think high school where I found out they had a online website of Tetris, and I played with friends constantly. We challenged each other. That's when I was introduced to uh, 99 Tetris, which is the battle royale Tetris, and it was it was so much fun. And Tetris definitely has a place in my heart. So. Uh, this is just one of those games that I was just like, oh yeah, that's really cool. I need to make sure I say something about it. Um, another one was like uh, any Yasha game for PS2, and I'm like, I didn't even know freaking in like there was an any Yasha game. I'm like, it makes sense. I just never knew that there was one. It came out uh, 20 years ago. A lot of these games that I was looking on that list were PS2, and I was gonna try to make a note saying like, oh yeah, PS2 games were trending. 20 years ago, and this is just like, well, obviously, that's probably roughly when PS2 came out anyways, um, which is a whole different segment, but I'm not going to bore you with history lessons, I'm here to bore you with Elden Ring content and stories about my life. Um, th this one was a little bit more about me, and do I apologize? God, no. Um... <laughs> because it's my podcast I control everything but th there is a thing though um, I do want to do this with other people but the, the only time I really get to do this is late at night and it's horrible because like they're both asleep and I can't do it with my wife because she's asleep because she works 3 o'clock in the morning or 4 o'clock in the morning or whenever you want to decide to get up in the morning kind of thing um, yeah, I mean I'm not going to tell people when our schedules are but th that's essentially from 3 a.m. to 11 p.m. basically we were both taken up on uh, child care uh, which is crazy to say by the way um, work house duties because we still live in apartments and we have to maintain this goddamn 
place. Make sure it doesn't fall apart so we have to pay more. And things like that. So life is one hell of a lot of responsibility. But here I am. Late at night. Close to midnight. Making a podcast. Because I think it's going to get somewhere. I'm going to put it with some gaming content. I think it's going to be good. Again, I'm still on the fence about the actual gaming content. I might do Warframe. I might do... I don't know. uh, Because I I literally have everything. Hell, I might do a collage. Because I'll definitely make notes on what game I'm using per podcast, though. Um... So, this is roughly the end, guys. Uh, If you want to lock off now, go ahead. This is all going to be fillers, advertisements, pushes, whatever. If you want to hurry up and hit that skip button on Spotify, feel free. Uh, If you want to close down YouTube and start the next episode, feel free. Uh, Give me a warning now. So, that said, I have social links on my profiles. Um, YouTube, I have to reorganize it because it's been like three years since I've touched any of them. Um, Make sure they're still active. Blah, blah, blah. Because I use like a lot of Harris Heller links and some by gaming stuff. And it's still there basically. And I have the same generic text for YouTube because it's easier just to get, well, leave it alone than make a new one. Um, last week I was wanting, I was trying to say I wanted to do audio. Can't do audio because the built in audio has that pre roll for like 10 seconds, which is fine. I like it. I'm just running through all the uh, the um, the samples until I find one I really like. So if you hear the music in the background, that's what this is. And I'm gonna try to rip it from the Spotify so I can put it on the YouTube video so the background music can be labeled. Hopefully, content free. I don't know how I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna be honest. Um, social links are there. Twitter's there. Instagram's there. Facebook. I have a Facebook page, guys. It's Nezrek Sin and Nezrek Sins. Um, why? Because I'm lazy. <laughs> no, I think Sins was already taken. And we just did Sin because you don't need the extra S on possessing something. So, I don't know. That, that was my mentality. So, it was just Nezrek Sins. Oh, and by the way, I do a lot of good Destiny content. I should probably warn you guys. If you're not on, if you guys are on here for random shit, I'm sorry. Destiny is gonna be like 80%. All other games gonna be like 15%, and then the niche shit is gonna be like 5%. And those niche shit will usually be videos on their own. Um, I played the Wayfinder beta. Uh, I don't know how the NDA is on that. I would love to do stuff with that. I really need to clean this up because I'm already at the 30 minute mark. Um. Social links. My sponsor is W, which I bought. Um, I don't have the container in here. Where did I put the container? Oh shit! I haven't had it in a couple of days. I actually don't know. <laughs> I've been like caffeine deprived the last couple of days. Um, it's my own fault. W, I uh, bought there are no more tears or tears uh, flavored uh, drink, and it's really good. I like it. It's blue raspberry. How can it diss blue raspberry? You know. And, uh, yeah, it was like, I think as a person who uses my discount code, it's like $42 with shipping, but with my sponsor code, because, you know, I'm a sponsor, I think it was $32 with shipping, and I didn't rush it, I just let it run, which it took like a week to get here, and they have a, it's pretty cool, they have like their own little envelope for W, I liked it, so I knew what it was when I got it. Um, but yeah, I would definitely suggest them use my code. Um, apparently, if I use my own link to order my sponsor stuff, I still get paid for it. So that's a neat trick, that you know, infinite money glitch, if you will. <laughs> All right, till next time, guys. This is Nezrexin signing off, and uh, I really wish I had more music for this shit. Have a good day. <laughs>